Conversation 1, Part 1, Having a Snack. In this conversation, you'll learn how to ask for a snack and understand the answer given. Adam, an English businessman working in Poland, goes to a small snack bar and asks the waiter for a ham sandwich and a mineral water. Key words and phrases. These are the new words and expressions you'll need to learn in this conversation. The English is given first. Repeat the Polish words out loud as you hear them. Can I help you? Here you are, or please. Proszę. Can I have? Poproszę. A sandwich? Kanapka. With? Z. Ham? Szynka. Anything else? Coś jeszcze? Mineral water. Woda mineralna. Sparkling, literally with gas. Gazowana. Or. Czy. Still, literally without gas. Nie gazowana. Thank you. Dziękuję. Now let's listen to part one of your first Polish conversation between Adam and the waiter. Proszę. Poproszę kanapkę z szynką. Proszę. Coś jeszcze? Poproszę wodę mineralną. Gazowaną czy niegazowaną? Niegazowaną poproszę. Proszę. Dziękuję. Later on, we'll give you the chance to speak in Polish after English prompts. Before you do that, you might want to practice the Polish phrases by replaying the conversation, pausing after each phrase and saying it out loud. You can do this yourself in all future conversations, but for this first conversation, we'll show you how to do it. Take the part of Adam. Repeat his part after him. Proszę. Poproszę kanapkę z szynką. Proszę, coś jeszcze? Poproszę wodę mineralną. Gazowaną czy niegazowaną? Niegazowaną, proszę. Proszę. Dziękuję. Well done. Now take the waiter's part. Repeat his part after him. Proszę. Poproszę kanapkę z szynką. Proszę, coś jeszcze? Poproszę wodę mineralną. Gazowaną czy niegazowaną? Niegazowaną poproszę. Proszę. Dziękuję. Making sense of it. Now let's find out a bit more about the words and expressions you've just used. Proszę. This is one of the most common, versatile and useful words. It has a number of different meanings. The waiter opens the conversation by saying this in the sense of, can I help you? But when he hands over the sandwich and mineral water to Adam, he says it again, this time meaning, here you are. It also means please, but we'll come back to this and the other meanings of this Polish word later in the course. Poproszę. This is a very similar word. It's the word that Adam used to ask for his sandwich. You use it when you would like to ask for something politely. Poproszę kanapkę. This means, can I have a sandwich, please? Poproszę wodę mineralną. Can I have a mineral water, please? Note that Poles ask for a sandwich with ham rather than a ham sandwich. Kanapka z szynką. And similarly, a cheese sandwich is... Kanapka z serem. A tomato sandwich. Kanapka z pomidorem. And finally, an egg sandwich is... Kanapka z jajkiem. Getting to grips with the grammar. You may be puzzled by the slightly different ending of some of the words when we introduce them in the key words and phrases section and how they appeared in the conversation. For example... Kanapka. Woda mineralna. Gazowana. Niegazowana. 
In this short conversation, you've uncovered probably the most important grammar point in Polish, endings. Words which describe people, places, things or concepts, and words which describe actions, have different endings depending on who says them and in what context. For example, the word for ham in Polish is Szynka. The Polish for with is Z. When you join the two together, the word for ham becomes Szynką. Similarly, mineral water is Woda mineralna. When used with can I have, it becomes Wodę mineralną. It's a vast subject, which is explained in detail in the separate Teach Yourself Polish course. For now, all you need to remember is that although endings are very important, if you get them wrong, you'll still be largely understood. Hopefully, by listening carefully and learning whole phrases, you'll remember the correct endings, and the more you practice, the more you'll be able to make sense of them. Over to you. Are you ready to order a snack? Have a go at being Adam and give the Polish version out loud after the English prompts. Then we'll give you the Polish so that you can check that you've got it right. Proszę. Say, a ham sandwich, please. Poproszę kanapkę z szynką. Proszę. Coś jeszcze? Say, mineral water, please. Poproszę wodę mineralną. Gazowaną czy niegazowaną? Still, please. Niegazowaną poproszę. Proszę. Thank you. Dziękuję. Excellent. Now imagine you're the waiter. Say the Polish part of the conversation out loud after the English prompts. Ask, can I help you? Proszę. Poproszę kanapkę z szynką. Here you are. Anything else? Proszę. Coś jeszcze? Poproszę wodę mineralną. Sparkling or still? Gazowaną czy niegazowaną? Niegazowaną poproszę. Here you are. Proszę. Dziękuję. Well done. That wasn't too difficult, was it? Let's move on to conversation one, part two. Ordering a meal in a restaurant. In this second part, we'll be using the words and phrases you learnt in conversation one, part one, in order for you to become really familiar with them. Adam is in a restaurant. The waiter takes his order for something to drink. Then Adam orders his main course and finally he asks for the bill. Keywords and phrases. Here are the words and phrases you'll need for conversation one, part two. Repeat the Polish out loud after you hear the word. Again, the English is given first. Something to drink. Coś do picia. Beer. Pivo. Pork cutlet. Kotlet schabowy. Chips or fries. Frytki. And. I. Side salad. Surówka. Very much. Bardzo. Bill. Rachunek. Now let's listen to the conversation between Adam and the waiter. Coś do picia? Poproszę piwo. Coś jeszcze? Kotlet schabowy, frytki i surówkę. Proszę bardzo. Poproszę rachunek. Proszę bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo. Making sense of it. You've probably noticed that the waiter added something to the following word. Proszę. 
Proszę bardzo. This new word means very much. And when added to words like please, thank you or I'm sorry, it's used to emphasize meaning. So thank you in Polish is Dziękuję. Thank you very much is Dziękuję bardzo. In our conversation, the waiter says the following after a request. Proszę bardzo. In this instance, it has a slightly different meaning. Here it means you're welcome or certainly. Over to you. Are you ready to have a go yourself? Make up the Polish from the English prompts. Speak out loud to practice your Polish. You'll then be given the correct version so that you can see if you've got it right. Start by taking Adam's side of the conversation. Coś do picia? Beer, please. Poproszę piwo. Coś jeszcze? Pour cutlet, chips and a side salad. Kotlet schabowy, frytki i surówka. Proszę bardzo. The bill, please. Poproszę rachunek. Proszę bardzo. Thank you very much. Dziękuję bardzo. Now take the waiter side of the conversation. Just like before, we'll help you with English prompts. Ask something to drink. Coś do picia? Poproszę piwo. Anything else? Coś jeszcze? Kotlet schabowy, frytki i surówkę. Certainly. Proszę bardzo. Poproszę rachunek. Certainly. Proszę bardzo. Dziękuję bardzo. We've come to the end of conversation one and you should feel a real sense of achievement. You're now well on your way to learning Polish. Conversation two, part one. Is it far to the National Museum? In this conversation, you'll learn how to ask about distance to and the location of a place or building. Adam is going to visit the National Museum in Warsaw. He asks the receptionist at his hotel how far it is from the hotel. Keywords and phrases. Here are the new words and phrases you'll need for conversation two, part one. Again, the English is given first. Repeat the Polish out loud. Excuse me. Przepraszam. How? Jak? Far? Daleko. Is? Jest. National Museum. Muzeum Narodowe. Quite. Enough. Dość. One needs to or you need to. Trzeba. Go. Pojechać. By bus. Autobusem. Bus stop. Przystanek. Not far. Niedaleko. Hundred. Sto. Meters. Metry. From here. Stąd. Now it's time to listen to Polish Conversation 2, Part 1, between Adam and the hotel receptionist. Przepraszam, jak daleko jest Muzeum Narodowe? Dość daleko. Trzeba pojechać autobusem. Jak daleko jest przystanek? Niedaleko. 100 metrów stąd. Dziękuję bardzo. Making sense of it. In this Polish conversation, you've come across and learned three very useful expressions that are used to describe distance. Jak daleko? How far? Dość daleko. 
quite far. Niedaleko. Not far. Do you remember the word for very or very much that we met in conversation one? Bardzo. We used it in the phrase thank you very much. Bardzo dziękuję. Following on from this, how would you say very far? Bardzo daleko. There's another very useful word in the conversation we've just heard. Trzeba. It's often translated as one needs to or one must. It sounds very formal in English, doesn't it? However, in Polish, it doesn't have similar formality. In fact, it's a very common everyday Polish word. The awkwardness of the translation comes from the fact that it's an impersonal expression. In English, we would say, you need to or you must. You may recall that in conversation one, you heard the word to, meaning or, as in mineral water, sparkling or still. Woda mineralna gazowana czy niegazowana. But czy has another function in Polish. When put at the beginning of a sentence, it indicates a general question, a type of question the answer to which is usually yes or no. For example, is this still mineral water? Czy to jest niegazowana woda mineralna? Is this a ham sandwich? Czy to jest kanapka z szynką? You'll hear more examples of this structure in due course. Getting to grips with the grammar. Words which describe people, things and concepts are called nouns. And in Polish, all nouns are divided into three groups. Masculine, feminine and neuter. It's fairly easy to recognize which group a noun belongs to. Most feminine nouns end in a, for example. Kanapka. A sandwich. Woda. Water. Szynka. Ham. Neuter nouns end in o or e, for example. Piwo. Beer. Masculine nouns end in a consonant, for example. Autobus. A bus. Przystanek. A stop. Rachunek. A bill. Cutlet. A cutlet. Now it's over to you. Take Adam's part and give the Polish after the English prompts. Remember to speak out loud. Say, excuse me. Przepraszam. How far is the National Museum? Jak daleko jest Muzeum Narodowe? Dość daleko. Trzeba pojechać autobusem. How far is the bus stop? Jak daleko jest przystanek? Niedaleko. Sto metrów stąd. Thank you very much. Dziękuję bardzo. Well done. Now play the part of the receptionist. Again, we'll give you the English prompts. Przepraszam, jak daleko jest Muzeum Narodowe? Quite far. Dość daleko. You need to go by bus. Trzeba pojechać autobusem. Jak daleko jest przystanek? Not far. Niedaleko. A hundred meters from here. Sto metrów stąd. Dziękuję bardzo. If you're ready, we can move on to conversation two, part two, which involves taking a bus. Conversation two, part two, taking a bus. In this Polish conversation, you'll learn how to find out which bus will take you to a particular place. Adam leaves the National Museum to spend an afternoon in Villeneuve Park, where there is the beautiful Royal Summer Palace. He goes to a bus stop and asks a lady for information. 
key words and phrases. Here are the new words and phrases you'll need for part two. Repeat the Polish out loud. To reach a destination by means of transport. Dojechać. Two. Do. How do I get to Villanuf? Jak dojechać do Villanova? Number. Numer. A hundred and twenty. Sto dwadzieścia. Ten. Dziesięć. Ten stops. Dziesięć przystanków. At or by. Przy. Palace. Pałac. No. Nie. A bit or a piece. Kawałek. To walk. Przejść. Let's listen to part two of the conversation now between Adam and the lady at the bus stop. Przepraszam bardzo. Jak dojechać do Wilanowa? Autobusem numer 120. Jak daleko jest Wilanów? Dość daleko. Dziesięć przystanków. Czy przystanek jest przy pałacu? Nie. Trzeba kawałek przejść. Daleko? Nie, nie daleko. Dziękuję bardzo. Now it's over to you. Are you ready to take Adam's side of the conversation? Play the part in Polish after hearing the prompts in English. Good luck. Excuse me. Przepraszam bardzo. How do I get to Villanuf? Jak dojechać do Villanova? Autobusem numer 120. How far is Villanuf? Jak daleko jest Villanuf? Dość daleko. 10 przystanków. Is the bus stop by the palace? Czy przystanek jest przy pałacu? Nie, trzeba kawałek przejść. Fa? Daleko? Nie, nie daleko. Thank you very much. Dziękuję bardzo. Now take the part of the woman at the bus stop. Remember to speak out loud. Przepraszam bardzo. Jak dojechać do Wilanowa? Bus number 120. Autobusem numer 120. Jak daleko jest Wilanów? Quite far. Dość daleko. Ten stops. Dziesięć przystanków. Czy przystanek jest przy pałacu? No, you need to walk a bit. Nie, trzeba kawałek przejść. Daleko? No, not far. Nie, nie daleko. Dziękuję bardzo. Well done. We've come to the end of conversation two. So far, you've learned how to cope with buying a snack, ordering a meal in a restaurant, and getting to interesting places by bus. Conversation 3, Part 1. Shopping for a souvenir. In this Polish conversation, you'll learn how to buy a souvenir in a gift shop. While staying in Poland, you'll probably want to buy a small souvenir. Adam would like to buy a silver and amber brooch. Keywords and phrases. 
Let's begin with the new words and phrases you'll need for part one of the conversation. Repeat the Polish out loud. I would like, said by a man. Chciałbym. To buy. Kupić. Brooch. Broszka. What sort? Jaka. Silver. Srebrna. And? I. Amber. Bursztynowa. This is? To jest. Nice. Ładna. Oh, yes. O tak. How much or how many? Ile. How much is it? Ile kosztuje? Fifty. Pięćdziesiąt. The Polish currency. Złoty. To pay. Zapłacić. Credit card. Karta kredytowa. Now it's time to listen to the conversation between Adam and the shop assistant. Proszę. Chciałbym kupić broszkę. Jaką? Srebrną i bursztynową. Proszę, ta jest bardzo ładna. O tak. Ile kosztuje? 50 zł. Chciałbym zapłacić kartą kredytową. Tak, proszę bardzo. Dziękuję. Making sense of it. In this conversation, you've learned two very useful structures. The first one is I would like, which differs according to whether it's spoken by a man or woman. Chciałbym. Chciałabym. It's always followed by a verb. And the good news is that the verb is used in its very basic form called the infinitive. It's the form you'll find in the dictionary. So you don't need to worry about different endings. For example, I would like to buy is... Chciałbym kupić. Chciałabym kupić. I would like to pay... Chciałbym zapłacić. Chciałabym zapłacić. I would like to go... Chciałbym pojechać. Chciałabym pojechać. I would like to send. Chciałbym wysłać. Chciałabym wysłać. You'll have an opportunity to hear this phrase in the next conversation, as well as later in the course. It's a very common as well as a polite phrase, so it's well worth practicing it as often as you can to get the pronunciation right. The second structure you've learned in this conversation is how much or how many. Ile? How much does it cost? Ile kosztuje? How much money? Ile pieniędzy? How many bus stops? Ile przystanków? How many sandwiches? Ile kanapek? Getting to grips with the grammar. So far, you've learned a number of Polish nouns, such as Muzeum, autobus, przystanek, kanapka, szynka, rachunek, woda. You've also learned that Polish nouns can belong to a particular gender, masculine, feminine or neuter groups. It's important to remember this when we talk about another group of words called adjectives. Words which describe nouns, for example, nice, pretty, long, easy, and so on. Think of adjectives as a noun's best friend. They accompany nouns and they behave in a similar way. You've already come across some adjectives in conversations one and two. For example, mineral, as in mineral water. Mineralna. Woda mineralna. Pork loin as in pork loin cutlet. Schabowy. Kotlet schabowy. 
National, as in National Museum. Narodowe. Muzeum Narodowe. In conversation three, you've heard Adam buying a brooch which was nice, silver and amber. Ładna, srebrna, bursztynowa. Sometimes adjectives follow a noun, as in woda mineralna. Sometimes they appear before a noun, as in ładna broszka. The rule to follow is quite simple. If a noun and an adjective form names or terms, for example, train station, mineral water or the National Museum, the adjective will follow the noun. In all other cases, the adjective will come first. Over to you. Now it's time for you to have a go at playing Adam's part. As usual, you'll hear the English prompts first. Remember to speak out loud. Proszę. Say, I would like to buy a brooch. Chciałbym kupić broszkę. Jaką? Silver and amber. Srebrną i bursztynową. Proszę, ta jest bardzo ładna. Oh, yes. O tak. How much is it? Ile kosztuje? 50 złotych. I would like to pay by credit card. Chciałbym zapłacić kartą kredytową. Tak, proszę bardzo. Thank you. Dziękuję. Now take the sales assistance part. Can I help you? Proszę. Chciałbym kupić broszkę. What sort? Jaką? Srebrną i bursztynową. Here you are. This is very nice. Proszę. Ta jest bardzo ładna. O tak. Ile kosztuje? 50 złoty. 50 złotych. Chciałbym zapłacić kartą kredytową. Yes, certainly. Tak, proszę bardzo. Dziękuję. Excellent. Now, when you're feeling confident about the new words and vocabulary you've met in part one, it's time to move on to part two. Conversation three, part two, sending a postcard. In this conversation, you'll learn how to buy stamps and send postcards. It's Adam's first stay in Poland, and he would like to send some postcards to his friends and family. He needs to buy three stamps for postcards to the UK and two for postcards to the USA. Keywords and phrases. Here are the new words and phrases you'll need for part two of conversation three. Say them out loud. To send. Wysłać. Postcard. Widokówka. To. Do. Great Britain. Wielka Brytania. Three. Trzy. A stamp. Znaczek. The USA. USA. Two. Dwa. Equivalent of pence. One hundredth of a zloty. Grosze. Listen carefully to the conversation between Adam and the clerk at the post office, which in Polish is... Na poczcie. Proszę. Chciałbym wysłać widokówki do Wielkiej Brytanii. Ile widokówek? Trzy. Proszę bardzo. Coś jeszcze? Tak. Poproszę znaczki do USA. Ile znaczków? Dwa znaczki. Proszę. Trzy złote i dziesięć groszy. 
Dziękuję. Now it's over to you. Play Adam's part and remember to speak out loud after the English prompts. Proszę. I'd like to send postcards to Great Britain. Chciałbym wysłać widokówki do Wielkiej Brytanii. Ile widokówek? Three. Trzy. Proszę bardzo. Coś jeszcze? Yes. Can I have stamps to the USA? Tak. Poproszę znaczki do USA. Ile znaczków? Two stamps. Dwa znaczki. Proszę. Trzy złote i dziesięć groszy. Thank you. Dziękuję. Now switch to being the clock. Try to sound as confident as you can and say her part out loud. Can I help you? Proszę. Chciałbym wysłać widokówki do Wielkiej Brytanii. How many postcards? Ile widokówek? Trzy. Certainly. Anything else? Proszę bardzo. Coś jeszcze? Tak. Poproszę znaczki do USA. How many stamps? Ile znaczków? Dwa znaczki. Here you are. Three zloty and ten grozy. Proszę. Trzy złote i dziesięć groszy. Dziękuję. Congratulations on reaching the end of conversation three. In this conversation you've learned how to buy a piece of jewellery, inquire if you can pay with a credit card, and buy postcards and stamps. Hopefully by now your confidence in using Polish in everyday situations is growing. Conversation 4, Part 1. Shopping for food. In this conversation, you'll learn how to do food shopping. Adam is going on a trip to a park and he needs to buy some food for a picnic. Keywords and phrases. As usual, you'll hear some familiar words and expressions as well as some new ones. Here's the new vocabulary you'll need in Part 1. Speak out loud after you've heard the Polish. Loaf of bread. Chleb. Four. Cztery. Rolls. Bułki. Forty. Czterdzieści. A unit of measure equivalent to a hundred grams. Deka. Butter. Masło. Cheese. Sir. Is that all? To wszystko? Kilo. Kilo. Apples. Jabłko. How much do I owe you? Literally, how much am I paying? Ile płacę? Twenty. Dwadzieścia. Four. Cztery. Five. Pięć. Sixty. Sześćdziesiąt. Change. Reszta. Now let's listen to conversation four, part one, between Adam and the shop assistant. Proszę. Poproszę chleb i cztery bułki. Proszę bardzo. Co jeszcze? Czterdzieści deka szynki. Co jeszcze? Masło i ser. Proszę. To wszystko? Nie. Poproszę kilo jabłek. 
To wszystko? Tak, dziękuję. Ile płacę? 20 zł i 40 groszy. Proszę, 25 zł. Dziękuję. Proszę, 4 zł, 60 groszy reszty. Making sense of it. A number of the new vocabulary items you've heard in this conversation relate to food, such as types of bread, like a loaf of bread, and bread rolls. Chleb. Bułki. Dairy products, such as butter and cheese. Masło. Ser. And fruit, such as apples. Jabłka. You've also come across some numbers in Polish. Let's look at numbers in more detail now. Let's start with the numbers from 0 to 12. Here are the numbers from 0 to 5. Repeat them out loud after you've heard the Polish. 0 1 2 3 4 5 Now, here are six to ten. Say the Polish out loud as practice makes perfect. Sześć. Siedem. Osiem. Dziewięć. Dziesięć. Finally, here are eleven and twelve. Jedenaście. Dwanaście. Forming a number from 11 to 19 in Polish is very similar to how you do it in English. You simply add the Polish equivalent of an English teen to a relevant digit, which is... Naście. Jeden. Jedenaście. Learning numbers is important because you'll use them in a wide range of situations. Telephone numbers, addresses, time, dates public transport, and so on. The important thing to remember about numbers in Polish is that, just like adjectives, they are also close friends of nouns. Getting to grips with the grammar. In the conversation you came across some Polish nouns in their plural form, for example, roll, rolls, bułka, bułki, and apple, apples, jabłko, jabłka. But unfortunately, there isn't one single easy rule in Polish for creating plural forms. Their form will depend on the gender of the noun and the letter it ends with. The easiest thing to do for the time being is to learn the full context in which plural forms appear. For example, four apples. Cztery jabłka. Now it's over to you. Are you ready to become Adam and do some food shopping? Take his side of the conversation and give the Polish out loud after the English prompts. Proszę. Can I have a loaf of bread and four rolls, please? Poproszę chleb i cztery bułki. Proszę bardzo. Co jeszcze? Forty decker of ham. 40 deka szynki. Co jeszcze? Butter and cheese. Masło i ser. Proszę. To wszystko? No, a kilo of apples, please. Nie. Poproszę kilo jabłek. To wszystko? Yes, thank you. How much am I paying? Tak, dziękuję. Ile płacę? 20 złotych i 40 groszy. Here you are. 25 złoty. Proszę. 25 złotych. Dziękuję. Proszę. 
4 zł 60 groszy reszty. Now play the part of the sales assistant and serve Adam. As always the English prompts will help you. Can I help? Proszę. Poproszę chleb i cztery bułki. Certainly. Anything else? Proszę bardzo. Co jeszcze? Czterdzieści deka szynki. Anything else? Co jeszcze? Masło i ser. Here you are. Is that all? Proszę. To wszystko? Nie. Poproszę kilo jabłek. Is that all? To wszystko? Tak, dziękuję. Ile płacę? 20 zloty and 40 grozy. 20 złotych i 40 groszy. Proszę, 25 złotych. Thank you. Here you are, four zloty and sixty grozy change. Dziękuję. Proszę, cztery złote, sześćdziesiąt groszy reszty. Well done. Now let's move on to part two, which involves more food. Conversation four, part two, buying cakes. In this conversation, you'll learn how to buy some cakes in a typical Polish cake shop, which is known as a cukiernia. You'll also get some practice using numbers and nouns in their plural form. Adam goes to a famous cake shop in Warsaw. He's going to buy 10 cakes. Here are the new words and phrases you'll need for this part of conversation four. Don't forget to speak out loud. Can I help you? Słucham. Cakes. Ciastka. What or which? Jakie? Donuts. Pączki. Cheesecakes. Serniki. Polish croissant-shaped cakes. Rogaliki. Marmalade. Marmolada. Meringues. Bezy. Now let's listen to the conversation between Adam and the shop assistant. Słucham. Poproszę 10 ciastek. Proszę bardzo. Jakie ciastka? Cztery pączki. Dwa serniki. Coś jeszcze? Dwa rogaliki z marmoladą. I dwie bezy. To wszystko? Tak, dziękuję. 20 złotych. Proszę. It's over to you. Now it's your turn to participate in the conversation. Take Adam's side and speak out loud after the English prompts. Słucham. Ten cakes, please. Poproszę 10 ciastek. Proszę bardzo. Jakie ciastka? Four donuts. Cztery pączki. Two cheesecakes. Dwa serniki. Co jeszcze? Two croissants with marmalade. Dwa rogaliki z marmoladą. And two meringues. I dwie bezy. To wszystko? Yes, thank you. Tak, dziękuję. Dwadzieścia złotych. Here you are. Proszę. Now imagine you're the sales assistant and take his side of the conversation after the English prompts. Can I help you? 
Słucham. Poproszę dziesięć ciastek. Yes, certainly. Which cakes? Proszę bardzo. Jakie ciastka? Cztery pączki, dwa serniki. Anything else? Co jeszcze? Dwa rogaliki z marmoladą i dwie bezy. Is that all? To wszystko? Tak, dziękuję. Twenty złoty. Dwadzieścia złotych. Proszę. Did you like learning about all those delicious Polish cakes? We hope so. You've just completed conversation four, and you've learned quite a lot so far. We hope it gives you confidence to move on to the next conversation. Conversation 5, Part 1. Arranging a meeting with a friend. In this conversation, you'll learn how to arrange a meeting at a certain place and time. Adam rings his old friend Ella, who lives in Krakow. They arrange to meet for coffee in the hotel on Friday at 11 a.m. Keywords and phrases. Here's the new vocabulary you'll need for this conversation. Repeat it out loud after you've heard the Polish. Good morning or good afternoon. Dzień dobry. To speak. Mówić. Shall we, perhaps, or maybe? Może. To meet. Spotkać się. For coffee. Na kawę. I'd love to. Bardzo chętnie. When? Kiedy? On Friday. W piątek. At eleven o'clock. O jedenastej. In the morning. Rano. Where? Gdzie? In a hotel. W hotelu. The name of the hotel literally means under a rose. Podróżą. See you. Do zobaczenia. Goodbye. Do widzenia. Now listen to the conversation between Adam and Ella. Remember, you can listen to it as many times as you need so that it becomes really familiar to you. Słucham. Dzień dobry, Elu. Mówi Adam. Może spotkamy się na kawę? Bardzo chętnie. Kiedy? W piątek o jedenastej rano. Dobrze. Gdzie? W hotelu pod różą. Dobrze. Do zobaczenia w piątek. Do widzenia. Making sense of it. In this conversation you've heard expressions describing the time of day, such as in the morning, rano, in the afternoon, po południu. Two more can be added to these, in the evening, wieczorem, at night, w nocy. Adam arranged to see Ella on Friday, w piątek, this is a good opportunity to learn the other days of the week. Let's start with Monday. Say the Polish out loud in the pause provided. Poniedziałek. Tuesday. Wtorek. Wednesday. Środa. Thursday. Czwartek. Friday. Piątek. Saturday, sobota, Sunday, niedziela. If you want to say on Monday, on Tuesday, and so on in Polish, you would literally say in Monday, in Tuesday. W poniedziałek, we wtorek. 
getting to grips with the grammar. Words such as in and on or for are called prepositions. The Polish for these particular prepositions are w, na. Other Polish examples of prepositions include na, piątek, na kawę. For Friday, for coffee. W, w piątek, w hotelu. On Friday, in a hotel. Po, po Krakowie. Around Krakow. Polish prepositions may be small, often just one or two letter words, but they are very influential because they decide what ending the noun will take. For example, hotel followed by in the hotel. Hotel w hotelu. Krakow followed by in Krakow. Kraków w Krakowie. The rules which govern the relationship between nouns and prepositions are rather complex. So for the time being, the easiest and most practical thing to do is simply to learn the whole context in which a noun and the preposition appear. If you're interested in how nouns and prepositions interrelate, this is fully explained in the separate course Teach Yourself Polish. However, luckily, some words don't change when used with some prepositions, such as the days of the week we've just looked at. For example, here is Friday, on Friday and for Friday. Piątek, w piątek, na piątek. Over to you. Are you ready to have a go? Imagine your Adam. Take his side of the conversation after the English prompts. Słucham. Good morning, Ella. Dzień dobry, Elu. Adam speaking. Mówi Adam. Shall we meet for coffee? Może spotkamy się na kawę. Bardzo chętnie. Kiedy? On Friday. Piątek. At eleven in the morning. O jedenastej rano. Dobrze. Gdzie? In the hotel under a rose. W hotelu pod różą. Dobrze. Do zobaczenia w piątek. Goodbye. Do widzenia. Now imagine you're Ella. Give her side of the conversation after the English prompts. Say, hello. Słucham. Dzień dobry, Elu. Mówi Adam. Może spotkamy się na kawę? I'd love to. Bardzo chętnie. When? Kiedy? W piątek o jedenastej rano. Fine. Where? Dobrze. Gdzie? W hotelu pod różą. Fine. See you on Friday. Dobrze. Do zobaczenia w piątek. Do widzenia. Well done. When you're feeling ready, let's move on to part two, booking a guide. Conversation five, part two, booking a guide. In this conversation, you'll learn how to book a guide and also how to use expressions related to time, days of the week and different times of the day. Ella would like a professional guide to show Adam around Krakow. She telephones the Tourist Information Center and says she would like to book a guide for Friday afternoon. Keywords and phrases. Here's the new vocabulary you'll need for this conversation. Remember to say the words out loud. Tourist information. Informacja turystyczna. To order or to book. Zamówić. 
A guide. Przewodnik. Around. Po. For when. Na kiedy. At two. O drugiej. In the afternoon. Po południu. Just a minute. Chwileczkę. We have. Mamy. At what time? O której? Surname. Nazwisko. Now let's listen to the conversation between the tourist information officer and Ella. Informacja turystyczna. Słucham. Dzień dobry. Chciałabym zamówić przewodnika po Krakowie. Na kiedy? Na piątek. Rano czy po południu? Po południu. Chwileczkę. Tak, mamy przewodnika na piątek po południu. Dobrze. Proszę czekać na przewodnika w hotelu pod różą. O której? Od drugiej. Poproszę nazwisko przewodnika. Tomasz Wilczyński. Dziękuję. Do widzenia. Now it's over to you. Imagine you are Ella. Take her side of the conversation. As usual, English prompts will help you. Informacja turystyczna. Słucham. Good afternoon. Dzień dobry. I'd like to book a guide for Krakow. Chciałabym zamówić przewodnika po Krakowie. Na kiedy? For Friday. Na piątek. Rano czy po południu? In the afternoon. Po południu. Chwileczkę. Tak, mamy przewodnika na piątek po południu. OK. Dobrze. Proszę czekać na przewodnika w hotelu pod różą. At what time? O której? O drugiej. Can I have the guide's name, please? Poproszę nazwisko przewodnika. Tomasz Wilczyński. Thank you. Goodbye. Dziękuję. Do widzenia. Well done. Now imagine you're the tourist information officer. Remember to speak out loud after the English prompts. Say, tourist information, can I help you? Informacja turystyczna. Słucham. Dzień dobry. Chciałabym zamówić przewodnika po Krakowie. For when? Na kiedy? Na piątek. In the morning or in the afternoon. Rano czy po południu? Po południu. Just a minute. Chwileczkę. Yes, we have a guide for Friday afternoon. Tak, mamy przewodnika na piątek po południu. Dobrze. Please wait for the guide in the hotel under a rose. Proszę czekać na przewodnika w hotelu pod różą. O której? At two. O drugiej. Poproszę nazwisko przewodnika. Say Tomasz Wilczyński. Tomasz Wilczyński. Dziękuję. Do widzenia. 
Congratulations! You've successfully completed Conversation 5. In this conversation, you've learned how to arrange a meeting with a friend, but the words and phrases we've used will allow you to make appointments, arrange business meetings, book guides and tours. You're halfway through the course, and so far you've learned how to order a snack and a meal in a restaurant, how to locate a place of interest and get there by bus, how to send postcards from Poland, buy a souvenir, food and some delicious Polish cakes, and how to arrange a meeting and book a guide.